What's happening YouTube? Back in the day gamer here. Thanks for tuning into my channel and today we're taking it way way back. We're gonna do an old school pickups video. That's right. Man, I love me a pickups video. Haven't done one of these in forever because game hunting's all but dried up and there's nothing left to pick up. So you gotta buy shit off eBay. And that's not nearly as fun. But it's more fun than not having any video games. So that's where we're at today. Okay, so some of these games actually came from a brick and mortar shop, but most of them came from eBay because I wanted to buy video games. I got a couple of bangers here. One is especially awesome Super Nintendo game that I'm psyched to have and play and talk about. And we're gonna, no, we're not gonna start with that one. We're gonna start with this one, which is also a banger. Um, don't remember where or when I got it. I've had it for several months. In the this is the pickup drawer right here. When I get things, you know, my I don't play them right away, or if I do, they don't get cataloged right away until I do a pickups video. So it's finally time for these guys to to take their their new home in the back in the day game room. But um, like I said, can't say where or when I picked this one up, but it is a good one. I wanted it for a while. Now I have it. And let's play it. Rambo 3 on the Genesis. Apparently, for some reason, I got the Japanese version because some of the text is in Japanese. And I've never seen an American game have some Japanese text. So, Rambo 3, it's a it's a fast-paced, top-down running gun, which generally I don't love, but I do like this one. The controls on it are super tight. I like the three-weapon switch on the fly. At first, I hated it because I don't play Genesis as much, so I'm not super used to the controller, and I was hitting the wrong button and putting the wrong weapon on, and it was killing me, but, but once I did get used to that, I actually really like it. That makes the gameplay real smooth once you get used to it. Uh, your machine gun is what you use most. Uh, one cool little twist on the machine gun is when you're running, running and gunning, you, you shoot straight because you're pushing the direction you're going. But when you're standing still, it sprays side to side, and I thought that was super cool. I can't recall that happened in any other games, but it happens in Rambo 3, and I like it. But uh, the gameplay in this, it's fun and addictive. You know, I, I'm not sure why, maybe it was just the weapon switching at first was throwing me off, but when I first started playing it, the first board was super hard. Then when I got to the second board, I felt it easier, even though I think that board is more difficult, but then I got used to it and I just really, I really got hooked on the gameplay and I had a lot of fun playing this. The sound is really good, you know, Genesis is known for having good sound and it does show on this game. I like it a lot! Aside from gameplay, graphics are the number one thing that pulls me to a game and the graphics on this one are just okay for the Genesis. That's not saying a bad thing because the Genesis at least the games I like for the Genesis usually have spectacular graphics and these are okay they're not bad at all but you know I, I've played much better on the Genesis but also much worse but I'm not I'm not failing these graphics I like them they're good as of now I've only really played through a few different levels or missions but but I'm liking it you know they all have a, a theme to it a goal uh, there's a boss or something to fight at the end of each but then you get these fantastic boss battles with the, the bow and arrow. Uh, the only ones I've got to so far were was fighting like a helicopter or something like that. I'm not sure if everyone is that way, but the ones I've got to so far were helicopters. And you know, that makes sense because that's how it is in the movie. But uh, I really think these stand out visually. It's fantastic. It's the reason this game stood out to me as one of the titles I wanted to buy and I really like them. It is kind of hard to get used to because you need to move the reticle and Rambo, and I mean, it's a boss battle, so it's kind of tough. You got shit coming at you, but I really, really like these scenes in the game, and for that reason and many more, Rambo 3 on the Genesis gets a license-based thumbs up. And to prove we're taking this video old school, I lit a stick of incense. When was the last time you burned some incense, right? That's some old school back in the day shit right there. And I don't smoke pot, so not sure why I have incense, because my wife doesn't let me burn it. She's not here. So she can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Next up is the banger of the lot. This game, 
I'm going to do a review of this game, but it's going to be Halloween because this is most definitely a Halloween themed game. Now forgive me for not doing my homework, but this is on the Super Nintendo and I believe this is a Japanese released only game. Didn't didn't come this state side, but this game kicks ass. I heard of it from Lucius T. And uh, he steered me right on this one. So this is a repro. I don't care because I really only care about Nintendo NES being licensed in that repo. I just knew I wanted to get my hands on this game. And I'm not sure if I didn't pay attention enough or it just said repo, but I don't care. Except I don't care because this game fucking kicks ass. And that is prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. Because you probably don't know anything about this game, but afterwards you're going to be running to eBay to spend that $20 to get this sucker shipped from Japan. And it is a title on the Super Nintendo by the name of King of Demons. Holy shit, am I having fun playing this game. Like I said, I'm assuming, like myself, you didn't know anything about this game until now. King of Demons, kind of, you would expect, like the name, it is super dark and ominous. That's what pulled me to it when I saw Lucius T talking about it, because I like to do Halloween reviews on games that fit the, the season, and they're sure there's some, but they're mostly talked about commonly, which doesn't make them bad, but this one is not. And when I saw him talk about it, I had to have it. Super dark and ominous, like I said. The intro, it's like your dead families, ghosts are talking to you. It's, you know, it's got a definite demon crest vibe. The only thing I don't like about this game is the tiny sprite. I hate that tiny little sprite. But I suppose the reason for it is because of the huge, unique, colorful enemies that are just wicked. So if your sprite was bigger, the enemies wouldn't be as huge because there's only so much room on the screen. And we'll get to the enemies in a bit. But yeah, I hate the tiny little sprite. As you can tell right away, you probably do as well. Music on this game is really good too, but just who cares? Gameplay. Gameplay and enemies. Obviously, this game is a side-scroller. Uh, another small problem, I hate to nitpick, but when you're when you're in a battle and you're switching from left to right, that's a little stiff, but, you know, totally forgivable, just a little stiff, not a game changer. One thing that is a game changer is the double jump. Man, I love me a double jump. When it's done correctly and you're not forced to do all these just pixel perfect harebrained jumps. That's why they give you the double jump. That makes it suck. No, this double jump just helps you kick ass. And I fucking love it in this game. It kicks ass. Another thing that I love is the background and the foreground. This game's got a lot going on visual wise. And I really like that because like I say, aside from the gameplay, which is most important, the visuals do it for me. So, you know, the enemies. These enemies are wicked. I mean, the game's called King of Demons. I apologize once again for not doing my homework. I don't know the whole story. I don't know if this is based off something that people know about and I don't. It doesn't matter because I don't know about it. I picked up the game, I'm playing it, and I love it. But the enemies are wicked. There's lots of dark shit in this. But aside from being wicked, some of them are spectacular and stand out. Like this flying centipede thing right here. Fun as hell in the battle. Looks cool, colorful, controls well. Yeah, loved this boss battle. Fucking loved it. I literally had to stop myself from playing this game because I felt like I was just gonna sit down and play all the way through it. And I wanna save it for Halloween. But this is where I'm stopping it because I just really wanted to keep playing. So I was like, screw it, turn it off here. This is where we're leaving it. We're gonna pick it up again when the leaves start falling off the trees. While out video game hunting, Many of your retro video game stores sell CDs. If you have a new car, it doesn't take CDs. But uh, I still have a CD player in my car, and I like to jam albums. I don't like to just put on fucking, I don't have Spotify, but I like to listen to the radio, okay? I'm old, I'm crotchety, I like to listen. To old people like to read the newspaper. 
I'm getting that way. I like to listen to the radio, but I like to throw an album in. I mean, yeah, you know, I want to listen to some 80s shit, you know, it's, it's sometimes there's just, we're going to cut it off at, there's just something about listening to a whole album. We're not talking about music. That's what we're doing. So I got a couple albums here. I'm a huge, huge Cinderella fan from 80s hair rock, but I'm not a huge fan of this album right here. And it is still climbing. Uh, no. I'm a huge Cinderella fan. And I don't want to speak ill of really anyone, especially someone I'm a huge fan of. But Cinderella's still climbing. You can pass on that. It does have one really good song. And, uh... Don't know. It's on there. Doesn't matter. Don't buy that album. An album you should buy, though, that, uh, you know, aside from 80s rock, I like old school rock and roll 60s and 70s shit rare earth scratch that itch right here what album is this well, this is rare earth the collection um it's got a lot of good ones rare earth has a lot of good songs you don't really want to hear about that because you don't but they do and i really love i just want to celebrate that is a kick-ass jam should, right now just hit pause go over to do, 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 do. Bare Earth, I just want to celebrate. Jam that song for 60 seconds and tell me that you're not in a better mood. I'll wait. I was right, wasn't I? I know. You're welcome. While at that store that I bought the CDs at, they had a couple of Atari games. I don't pick those up too much because there aren't a whole lot that I want, but more realistically, I look at that collection a lot less, so I'm not sure which ones I have. And I hate buying games, I already had. So, if I don't know, I usually just pass when it comes to Atari. These two titles, I knew I didn't have. Let's start off with an Activision game. I love these Activision cards. Stampede! I love these Activision cards, and I want to collect all of them. But Stampede's a solid game. I know, it's Atari, so it is what it is. As you can see here, in my super old school, really shitty game footage camera taken of the television itself, that this is a fun game. There's not a lot to it, not a lot of substance, but it is fun. You got, uh, you know, you're the cowboy on the horse, and you're lassoing up the cattle, or horse, or whatever they are. If they get past you, it's like you lose a, you lose a life. You only get, you get a three up top every time one gets past you, it counts down. And when it's down to nothing, game over. I realize, once again, Atari isn't everyone's cup of tea. Speaking of cup of tea, that was refreshing. But I grew up playing Atari. It was the first system I ever played. It's all there was back in the day. And it was amazing. Now, you look at it, and it obviously looks like shit. But back then, it was absolutely fucking amazing. So, you know, it still, still holds something for me when I walk past that pile of big old cheap-ass Atari games. But sometimes those games aren't cheap. And sometimes I want to buy them anyways. Now this one was only 10 bucks, which is expensive for an Atari game, especially one in the wild. But this is one I knew I didn't have, and I knew I wanted it. Because I wanted it for a while. You maybe never heard of it. But I have, and I wanted it, and now I have it. And it's called Fast Food. Check out that cover art. Aside from this game, I always liked the cover art, and I still do. This label is in fair condition for an Atari game. It's not good, but they're usually pretty fucked up by, you know, because we're looking at 40 years plus. As you can see here, once again, on this gameplay, crappy taken off the camera right at the TV game footage, is that, uh, you know, you're a mouth and you're gobbling up food, and you can't eat the purple pickles. God forbid you eat a purple pickle. They must be poison. Poison purple pickles, but you eat up all the other shit and you're trying to get a high score and you become full at some point and you get a little break in between rounds and then you go again and, and it gets super fucking fast and crazy and it's fun. I know it's just a regular shitty gameplay Atari game, but it controls really well. You know, your joystick's responsive. You don't hit a button for anything. And after a while it gets fast as fuck and there's nothing you can do and you end up eating purple. Purple pickles and dying! 
Poison purple pickle, poison purple pickle, poison purple pickle. <laughs> so, the game capture for the Ataris, right? Let me explain. For some reason, whenever I hook up, I got a Hyperkin a HD Atari, so I got the HDMI cord, so I'm cheating, but whenever I hooked up to my game capture device, which is an Elgato, which I love, it uh, fucks it up. And it's like, you don't have sound, and I gotta like reset everything, so I just didn't hook it up to that. I already had the camera, so we didn't really lose any, lose anything from that transfer of film, because it's Atari. Yeah. Um, I got some more games here still, but a couple things that I picked up that aren't games that I wanted to throw on, because I fucking love them. He's got me some candles. Always got candles going on in the game room, because when the wife's home, I can't burn incense. But, uh, Hostess Orange Cupcake. Fucking love these. They're like my favorite. They got a candle now. Now I have it. It smells delicious. I love it. I also picked up the Ding Dong and the Twinkie. Of course, I had to, right? Uh, I had a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup one. I already burned that. And I had a Fago Red Cream Soda one. And I burned that. And I liked them a lot. That's all we're going to say about it. Candles. Love them. Love them. Okay. We got three more games here. They're on the Game Boy Advance. A system that I've been giving a lot of love to of late. Because when I drag my ass to a game store and there's nothing left, just go for that pile of cheap GBA games, and sometimes you find some winners, sometimes you find some losers. These ones are middle of the road. They're middle of the road. We'll start with uh, this one here. My, oh, I'm check my bifocals. It's, uh, I'm not sure why, but I always want to play a Pink Panther game whenever I see it. There's not a lot of them, but every time I've seen them, I've been excited to buy it. And this is Pink Panther Pinkadelic Pursuit. Pink Panther Pinkadelic Pursuit. It's much like Poison Purple Pickles. I didn't plan that. <laughs> this, uh, it nails the cartoon, first of all, which, once again, I'm not sure why I'm so drawn to Pink Panther, because the cartoon itself, I never really liked as a kid. I think it came out, like, a long time ago, way before I was born and young, but I don't know, I just always liked it, not sure why, but this nails the cartoon, this cutscene, and it just, actually all the Pink Panther games I played pretty much have nailed them, but it nails it. I'm gonna be honest though, that's as far as we can get with the good things I have to say, because the first board is a fucking fail. So it's in space, right? And in space, gravity is different, so keeping that in mind, this does make a lot of sense. And in theory, theory, it sounds like a good idea. But gameplay-wise, it is not. It was not super fun. Floating and jumping and having a horrible time playing this first board. And at first, I jumped around for like what felt forever and still not really getting anywhere. But I didn't want to give up because it's only the first board. And what if the gameplay changes after this, which I'm sure it does because it's not a whole game about space, but I just was super put off and I really wanted to get past the first level to see what else this game had to offer, hopefully more, and I am going to force myself to play more, but in capturing the footage for this, I just got bored and stopped. Sorry, so as of now, I can't recommend Pink Panther Pink and Delic Pursuit, but did nail the cartoon, so if you're a fan, check it out. Next up! Another Game Boy Advance title, Family Feud. So if you're looking to play some Family Feud, not virtually, but video game-wise, this is the game you want. Sticker on this bad boy says three bucks, and I'm gonna say three dollars well spent, because if you're looking to play some Family Feud in video game form, this is a really good one. Haven't played a whole lot of Family Feud video games, I gotta admit, but I have played at least two. And this one is better than the other one. Or ones, for sure. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's solid. The graphics are good, it controls well, it has sensible questions, and I had fun playing it for the 10 minutes I played to capture footage for this video. Before we talk about this last game, I picked up something 
that I was really excited for. Because this is old school, back in the day shit. For sure. And seeing this is going to bring back some memories. And that's why I got it. But it is a... It's a dinosaur, right? Well, here, you know what it is. Grow. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Throw this fucker in water, and he grows up to 600%, 600% larger than this. 600%. Now, I don't know what kind of math they're doing, but it's not 600%. <laughs> yeah, so I bought one of the, a couple of them, and you know, oh, I thought it'd be fun. Obviously, it takes a long time. This one says it may take up to 10 days to completely grow up to 600% of its original size. But waiting 10 days to see something this big, get this big, wasn't exactly exciting. When my nephew was over here the other day, for the video game tournament that we had. I set up five different video games in here. I got I got the Simpsons Arcade, and then I got a, a Bar Top Arcade, then I hooked up the Nintendo on the big screen, I hooked up another little screen, and we had the Genesis on it, and then we had the Super Nintendo over here, and we all sat in the game room, played video games, and it was awesome. And my nephew just kept, what's this, what's this? Can we put it in water? And I'm like, buddy, it takes 10 days. It's not what you think. And he was just like, wouldn't stop. He was super excited. So I'm giving that to him. And he can learn about disappointment. <laughs> last game. Speaking of disappointment, last game. Don't turn it off because this is a good game. But I was disappointed, okay? I'm not sure why, probably saw it in a video. I say that like every fucking time I talk about a game. Not sure why, oh, probably found a video. Probably saw it in a video, but uh... Okay, my camera said recording stopped because I was babbling too long. So I'm not sure where we were, but I know we were saying, speaking of disappointment, I wanted this game for a while because of whatever reason, and the idea of this game sounds really great. And always playing it on the Nintendo was not really great, but I saw the potential there for something really good. And I figured the Game Boy Advance would make improvements on that, so I had to have it. Have it, I do, and I think it was like 15 bucks, right? Which, you know, that's a lot for a Game Boy Advance game. I could be wrong, maybe it wasn't even that much. But anyway, the game we're talking about is none other than Defender of the Crown. Now everybody's played this fucker on the Nintendo and it's not great at all. Is it great on the Game Boy Advance? It's not great. Is it better? Fuck yeah, it's better. But it's still not great. I have been told that Defender of the Crown on the Game Boy Advance is the definitive version to play it. I'm sure someone out there who had it on PC way back in the day is going to disagree with me, but that's what I heard and I feel like it's correct. You know, like I said, it's an awesome concept. The NES version sucked, but it is better. That being said, it's not a terrible game on the NES. It sucked. It's definitely better on the GBA. Uh, the cutscenes and graphics, for one, are leaps and bounds better than they were on the NES. When you go raiding castles, that's kind of fun when you're doing little sword fights. Uh, you know, that's all right. But other than that, the gameplay kind of sucks. The map screen where you're choosing, where to go and what to do. It, it's, that's absolutely no fun, it completely sucks. When you fight in the tournament, what should be awesome is not. The jousting's not great. I'm sure it's just because I don't have it down, but how hard should I have to try to be able to complete the jousting? They should make it easier and more fun somehow, but they didn't. <laughs> then if you're lucky enough to get past the jousting and you're battling it out on foot, that also sucks because it's super slow and clunky, which would make sense because you're in heavy armor, swinging heavy metal weapons. But if you're making a game, sure, you don't need to make it realistic. You need to make it fun because if people are going to play a game more than once. It's because it was fun or you had nothing else. And nowadays, people have more choices than one. So I got to say, they didn't think that out. <laughs> no, no, I'm shitting on it. but. Uh, if you like it at all, 
on the NES, then you're going to fucking love this version. I don't love it, and I don't hate it. But I have it now, and I don't think it's going anywhere. Because Game Boy Advance games are this big, and I'm just going to throw it in the drawer with the hundred others I have that I, like, never play because I forget I even have them because they're this big in this drawer. <laughs> but there you go. Boom! That's a lot of pickups. Not a quantity lot, but a, a that's the lot of pickups because it's not, not a whole lot of them. But, fuck yeah, King of Demons. I know that this was only 20 bucks. You want King of Demons, 20 bucks. If not, if you don't get it, just wait till Halloween comes out because I'm gonna have that be my first Halloween video of the year because I'll probably sit down and beat it right now before I even catalog it on the shelf there because man, King of Demons was awesome. If you learn nothing else from this game, video, pickups, get yourself King of Demons. <laughs> there you go, that's gonna do it for today. The wife's going to be home soon, so I'm going to get yelled at because the house smells like incense. Right? My bad guy. I don't think so. What's the big deal, right? Thanks for tuning in to my channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And until next time, keep it retro!